Just recently, I had an experience where I was able to participate in one of Atlantic's um, Technique Tuesday classes, which was taught by Reggie White, who is a genius. And so in that moment, um, participating in that class, I was able to see so much of my own growth um, throughout the past two and a half years that culminated in that moment for me. Um, I was working on a monologue, which I'd used for years before that. Um, and the monologue is uh, Rose from Fences, which I'm sure everyone is familiar with. And I'd used that monologue actually uh, to get into Atlantic. So that was my audition monologue when I got into Atlantic. And as I worked with Reggie, I felt the freest that I had ever felt in my entire time as an actor. Um, I felt incredibly um, just dropped in, in the moment, and just not worrying about anything um, except, you know, the action that I was that I was playing, that I was going for. And so, and that's the thing about the practical aesthetics technique, that it's, um, you know, the four-step technique, which is the literal, what is the character actually saying, what are they literally saying, the want, what does the character want um, from the other character, and the action, which is what is the essential nature of that. And so, um, and then the final one is the as if, which is something that is adapted from the Meisner technique. And essentially it's just um, thinking of a moment in your life in which this could potentially, um, this, this action could potentially be played. And so, or be, you know, uh, executed in your real life. Um, and so when I was working with Reggie on this monologue, um, everything that I had ever done in this piece just went out the window. And it was just full and alive and, um, and amazing. And I think that's what, to me, that's what acting is supposed to be. It felt like what acting is supposed to be. As embarrassing as this is, <laughs> Before that, um, I many times I would rely on inspiration in in a piece. Um, of course, I had taken so many acting classes. I have a BFA in acting as well, and I had studied with uh, multiple different teachers. Um, but I never felt like I had like a technique. And it was only when I came to Atlantic that I started to um, just feel like I had a technique that would be there for me every single time. And so this is especially helpful for me um, at auditions when I don't have time to do Uta Hagen's like, I don't know how many questions, background questions and character analysis and all of that stuff, but I could just do these four steps and one, two, three, four. Um, I have, the, I have, I'm in the scene and I'm dropped in. I feel like uh, many times artists are misunderstood. Um, one of the things that I find interesting is when uh, artists say that they that they do their art to express themselves. That's something that we hear a lot, you know, when I express myself in this way. And I find that artists are more than expressing themselves when we create art. Artists are, are conduits of words, of thoughts, of, of, of beliefs, of worldviews. And when we create through this medium, a way for people to to connect, and in that way foster empathy and human connection and love. And so that's something that I find that is, I hope that is not lost in this in this time of of lockdown, in this time of of pause. You know, I want to encourage artists to, even if it's just 15 minutes a day, to do something for your art. And whether it's writing, whether it's you know working on a monologue as, as an actor, um, whether it's drawing or painting or something that just just feeds your your artist's spirit, so that that conduit is not shut down, so that when we get back to whatever normal is going to be after this, we're 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 in a place where we can continue to serve the world in the way that we do. How are you like doing this? Like eyeline or who are you looking at or how this is magic? It is magic. 
Okay, great. Oh, okay, great. You better give it to that. You better give it to that clothespin, that cheating ass clothespin. Do it. Do it. Okay. So, so really, really sort of breathe and and really focus on correcting their version of the story. Really tell the truth, really get them to wake up to reality. Yeah? yeah. Great. Whenever you're ready. Why, Troy? Why? After all these years, for you to come drag this in on me now? It don't make no sense. I've been standing right here with you. I have been right here with you. I gave my life to stand here in the same spot with you. You think I never wanted other things? You think I didn't have dreams and hopes? What about my life? What about me? You think the thought never crossed my mind to want to know other men? That I wanted to lay up somewhere and forget about my responsibilities? That I wanted someone to make me laugh so that I could feel good too? You are not the only one with wants and needs around here, Troy. I held on to you. I took all my feelings and my wants and needs and dreams and I buried them inside of you. I planted myself inside of you and I waited to bloom. It didn't take me no 18 years to figure out that the soil was hard and rocky and that I wasn't never gonna bloom. But I held you tighter. You was my husband. I owed you everything I have. And upstairs, in that room, with the darkness falling in on me, I gave everything I had to try and erase the doubt that you wasn't the finest man in the world. So you talk about all you give. And you, know, you don't have to give, but you, you take too. You take and you take and you don't even know nobody else is given. Yeah, that's different. What are, you, what are you feeling now? What's happening? What's going on? This is much more direct. And it's like, these are the facts. This is what you've, this, it's like, I'm, it's like, a, it's like a list of facts. Yeah. And like, it, it, it's actually kind of amazing that you're using that clothespin, which is like, we don't even have to get into the dramaturgy of how that's like perfect for Rose because like, she's like doing yeah. the laundry and there's so much care. And also Troy's ass, you know, is wooden and stiff and not going nowhere and not listening and hard headed. Um, that was exactly what I was thinking when I <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing.